This is Brewery Town in North Philadelphia. Population, 12,000. The 2000 census described Brewery Town as 94% African American with a median household income of $21,000 a year, a third of the regional average. Through the city's policy of supporting gentrification, Brewery Town has been changing, with more affluent individuals and families moving in and more longtime residents being forced out. Fortunately, due to the outreach, legal, entrepreneurial, and other efforts of organizations such as ABRA, the African American Business and Residents Association, city-supported gentrification has only displaced a minority of the residents, but the threat to our community's annihilation is ever-present. The community remains vigilant, defending its rights and opportunities whenever necessary. There have been dozens of community meetings and grassroots efforts designed to improve the quality of life for longtime residents while welcoming new residents. Working diligently to quicken the pace of gentrification and displacement in Brewery Town is Westrom Development. Once exclusively a suburban real estate developer, Westrom now dines with the core of Philadelphia's political establishment and center city law firms. Westrom uses these ties to circumvent and rewrite zoning laws so that the longtime residents of Brewery Town and other communities lose their ability to oppose harmful real estate projects. Pro gentrification mayor John Street even appointed John Westrom, the principal owner of Westrom Development, to the Zoning Reform Commission. In a classic case of corrupt city politics, Westrom has refused to negotiate with ABRA and others in the community, preferring to purchase the illusion of support from unethical nonprofits. They've won approval from the Planning Commission and Zoning Board to build a middle income, gated community in Brewery Town that does not contain a single affordable housing unit. This in one of the city's poorest neighborhoods. Three years ago, they worked with the Redevelopment Authority to evict 100 black cowboys from Brewery Town, ending decades of a unique and treasured community partnership. This quickly led to the demolition of several historic buildings in 2004 and 2005, even though Westrom knew that any development on those lots would be at least three years in the making. Today, after brazenly changing the zoning code to allow them to build 600 new condos in the price range of $400,000 to $500,000, Westrom is demolishing even greater treasures at 1429 North 32nd Street and possibly destroying smugglers' tunnels dating back to the Prohibition era. To understand how tragic these actions of profit over history are, we first need to explore how important Brewery Town has been to the city's development. Covering approximately 20% of Brewery Town is an area known as the Brewery Town Historic District. In 1990, Dr. Brent D. Glass of the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission filed a registration document with the National Register of Historic Places. This document ultimately became the basis for the approval of the Brewery Town Historic District to be listed with the National Register. In his document, Dr. Glass makes the following observations. By the 1880s, beer was one of the top five most valuable products of the city following cloth, carpets, steel, and construction, but ahead of such specialized industries as railroad engines. And the Bergner and Engel Brewery was the third largest in the nation, behind only George Errett of New York and Best of Milwaukee. Brewery Town is the most complete group of buildings from the important Philadelphia German lager beer industry by the major architects of the brewing industry. Because it is associated with events that made a significant contribution to our history and embodies the distinctive characteristics of German brewery styles, the Brewery Town Historic District meets the criteria of the National Register. Despite the impact of Prohibition, the Germanic brick architecture of one of Philadelphia's great industries remains much in evidence in dozens of buildings that range from the brewers' mansions to workers' houses and from the breweries and storage buildings to the stables and wash sheds. No other region of the city contains such a wealth of brewing related structures. Fortunately, despite many losses, the major buildings that survive 
are the work of the premier architects of this specialized industry. Two were particularly notable, Otto Wolff and William Decker. Buildings of the Brewery Town District are the dark red brick typical of Philadelphia of the mid-1870s, with most of the ornament generated by the manipulation of the brick, as pilasters, piers, and corbelled cornices. Brightly colored stone accents further enliven the surfaces, characterized by round arched windows and doors set between framing piers or pilasters, and horizontally subdivided by corbelled belt courses and cornices, the style enjoyed a wide popularity among the German ethnic population in North Philadelphia during the same period. This architecture appeared on all of the buildings associated with the brewing industry. Dr. Glass's work allows us to understand that the destruction of 1429 North 32nd Street is a loss to the city and nation. In his inventory of the historic buildings of Brewerytown, Dr. Glass describes this building as follows. Three-story brick gabled fronted refrigeration and shipping shed for Bergner and Engel Brewery immense gabled volume circa 1880 connected to large similar buildings in center of block part of former brewery complex this is the site in late November 2007 as the demolition of 1429 North 32nd Street was being completed What right did Westrom have to destroy a national treasure? Why did the Philadelphia Planning Commission, City Council, Mayor, purchasers of Westrom's condos, and others support this? What buildings in Brewery Town and other historic districts are next? Why should Westrom's profit be more important than our history?